Good morning. Welcome to Let's Get Growing Facebook Live. It's a beautiful morning. Sun is shining. It's nice and cool. We're out in the garden today doing one of those jobs that's kind of an ongoing job um, right from spring through fall. But now this late summer getting into September time uh, is really the biggest time when we're starting to collect seeds off plants to uh, prepare for next year's crop and, you know, get things, uh, you know, whatever we want to increase or give away seed or give to uh, seed exchanges, that sort of thing. So I'm going to look at a few different items um, and uh, I'll show you our method for collecting seed and uh, storing seed until we're ready to sow it. Um, we're gonna start over in the garden here. We're gonna turn, I'm gonna climb into the garden. We're gonna turn around here quickly. And we're gonna look at a plant that's quite obvious in when the seeds are ripe. Um, this is a Heraclium or, or a, a cow parsley, not Heraclium that gives the rashes. Don't worry about that. We don't grow that one, not the giant hogweed. It is in the same family, but this is uh, Heraclium pink cloud. It's a gorgeous pink umbellifer uh, that blooms in July, now ready for seed collection. So you can see on the umbellifers, it's quite easy to tell. You've got a good sized seed head there. Very large seeds and a bit of a papery coating. And they're nice and brown. The odd one started to fall off. So it's definitely time to start collecting seed from these guys. So really all we do, when the seed is ripe like this, we can just take all those little seed heads, cut them, and then we simply just drop them into paper bags. We don't worry too much about what's going on in there. We'll take all this. That'll go right into paper bags because they're ripe. More of them there. Once we've collected all the seed we want, another ripe seed head there. We've got a few seed heads that are not fully ripened yet. And you can see this one here. Not fully ripened yet. It hasn't turned that papery brown, but it's starting to do that. And you can actually take most seed at this stage here that way, A, you don't lose the seed because they're not quite ripe yet. I will leave more stem on them and then put them into the bag with the other seeds. They're going to sit and ripen in that bag until we're ready to clean the seed up and use it. After that, of course, after you've got the seed you need, you can then clean up the plant. I'm going to get a few more seed off there clean up the plant and get rid of those stems so you can tidy things up. And on many plants, they can go right down and we'll go right to the foliage there. Not leaving any dead stalks around. It takes some more seed. We can go right down. And then our plant again is nice and tidy. And we're not looking at dead seed heads all the time. I may come back for more of those seed. I'll just leave those there for now. Also very important, you take that bag and you write the name on the bag. Heraclium Pink Cloud. I guarantee you in November, when we sit down to clean these seeds and prepare them for sowing, we're not going to remember what that is. So make sure you put the name on the bag. But that's it. That's how we do it. They just go right into the bag there. That's a big, easy seed. We put them in a room where it's dark and cool. And then when we get around to cleaning them, that's when we start. Okay, Laura, we're going to swing it around here. Oh, actually, you know what? Some things, you know, a seed varies in size. I'm looking at these Rogersias, 
Rogersias I don't normally grow from seed. We usually grow them from divisions. But there's nothing that says you can't grow them from seed. I don't know if the seed is ripe or not yet. It's hard to tell. But it's amazing that such a big plant will grow from such tiny seed. This is Rogersia seed head here. You can see each of these is a little seed pod. And if I can get one open, they're not quite ripe yet. No, not quite ripe. But there's a little pile of seed in there in each of those. So that one I would leave a little bit longer till I can see it starting to brown a little bit and then I would harvest the seed. But I do it exactly the same way. All right, let's jump over here. There are some thelictrums, Thelictrum aquilegia folium again. I've cut them, they've dried simply into the bag. Once they're this dry, of course, remember you don't need all the stems there. You just need the seed and in many cases, I can probably shake a lot of that seed off now and shake it right into the bag but just so I get, make sure I get it all, we'll take those stalks off. And there we go. Very, very easy. Thelectrum aquilegia folium. I'll let Laura write that tag while I'm talking. Because we're gonna look at a couple of other plants. Uh, Ah, the primulas. So, we had some primula bermanica here in the garden, in the bog, and it's finished going to seed. It's finished, blooms for quite a long time, because it's one of those candelabra primulas. So it gets this neat tier. Starts off with a cluster of flowers. As it's finishing, it grows up grows another little cluster of flowers and continues to do that. So it blooms for a very long time. So you've got often ripe seed or near ripe seed and sometimes flowers on the top. We've left this for a, uh, quite a while, but I'm going to do the same now. We've taken that stalk off. The seed pods have actually opened, so I might be a bit late, but I'm going to just have a look here and see what our seed is like. But I'm gonna show you how small the primula seed is. There's primula seed right there. I don't know if you can see it, Laura, closely, but as I just tease out those, there's the primula seed coming out of that pod, right? So you can imagine how many seeds, put those right back in the bog. Jeff, what is the name of that primula? This is Primula Burmanica. B-U-R-M-A-N-I-C-A, Burmanica. It's an easy, easy candelabra primula. Um, it grows in the bog, my little fake bog that I created. It grows exceptionally well in there. It's actually quite easy to grow from seed. It has beautiful red flowers and is now actually reseeding in the bog. So it's a, it's a beautiful, very easy going primula to grow. And from these seeds, we'll have plants ready for next year. I'll give Laura that bag, Primula Burmanica. Now some seeds, um, you sort of, you know, take your time, decide when you want, because a plant like a salvia, is going to have ripe seed at the base of a still flowering stalk. So you wanna look at those and sort of gauge when it's time to take the seed. Personally, when the salvias get this long and there's just a few flowers at the tips, I don't think they're very attractive anymore, but you've already got some ripe seed in there. So you can actually then harvest sort of the whole thing I would just take off that top bit because that's useless because it's still blooming. And then think about saving this. Now, salvias are interesting plants. I'm actually, the seed is not fully, fully ripe in these yet. 
but it's neat that you can look at a salvia and look into the calyx, which is this part right here. That's where the flower came out of. That's the calyx. You can look down into the calyx and you can actually see the seeds forming there and you can decide if they're ripe enough to harvest. These ones in the calyx here, let's just peel the calyx open and have a look. These ones are still green, but there you go. You can see some perfectly formed little seeds right inside the calyx there. They're still immature. They're not fully ripe yet because they're still bright green. Can you see that, Laura? Mm -hmm. Still bright green. When you see those little seeds at the bottom of the flower stalk starting to turn brown, harvest the whole flower stalk, put them into your paper bag, and over the course of the next couple of months, they will. the majority of them will ripen. And if you think about how many seeds you actually need, with a salvia, you get four seeds per flower. So you look at that stalk. That stalk probably had, geez, I don't know, 200 flowers on it maybe. That's 800 seeds. You're going to get about 400 of them to fully ripen in the bag. How many more do you need, right? But that's an easy way and an easy plant to collect seed from, and salvias are easy to grow from seed. So you can increase them very easily. Remember, name varieties don't always come true. That's very important. So if you're going through your garden and you pick up salvia, let's say salvia May night for just for first one that popped into my head. If you take seed of salvia May night, that's a hybrid. So you should always label your seed salvia X May night, EX May night. And that just means that it's seed from May night, but it's not going to come true from seed necessarily. There are some plants that have been bred and bred and bred, so you get a very consistent uh, plant grown from seed. Rudbeckia goldstrom is offered from seed, and uh, it's been grown from seed for so many generations, it's very consistent. Uh, a lot of annuals are that way. Um, heirloom tomatoes are that way not every plant is that way so watch that and always label that seed X whatever the name is just meaning it came from that seed but won't be exactly true another one we've got here this is kind of an oddball plant but it is a native plant for bogs um, I'll probably get the name wrong Arnoglossum, I think, is the correct name. And it has an interesting seed pod. It's in the Aster family. I think it's in the Aster family. It sure looks like it. There's the seed pods there. And then as they ripen, they come out to these little hairy tufts, almost like a little dandelion, with the seed attached to the bottom. With seeds like this, so seeds in the Aster family... You want to get them when the, the heads are just starting to ripen. Because as soon as they come loose, off they go in the wind. So you don't want that to happen. You want to get the seed as it's uh, just ripening. I don't know, Laura, if you can... I'll lift the seed head up, the flower head up, and you can see that we're just getting a bit of seed starting here and lots of seed that's going to be close. So I'm going to harvest this entire seed head and let it dry in the bag, and then I'll have lots of seed collected from this guy. It's kind of a neat native uh, for bogs. Uh, I'll find the name and we'll put it in the chat after, because <laughs> I can't remember it. It's called Arnoglossum. Arnoglossum is correct. Yeah, what's the common name? Is there a... Indian plantain. Indian plantain. There you go. It's a big plantain-y looking leaf. Um, and then a tall spike. Ours got about four feet with this huge head of flowers. They can sometimes get up to five, six, seven feet tall with these huge heads of umble like flowers. So it's a cool plant if you've got a damp area and are looking for natives. Now, we're going to talk about one more. I'm going to move the camera over here. Quick question, Jeff. Yes. 
How easy is it to get lantana seeds, or is it better to take cuttings? Oh, well, for lantanas, I don't know that I've ever seen lantana seed offered. Um, lantanas are traditionally grown from cuttings. Uh, so if you've got one you like, um, take cuttings. The only one I've ever seen available from seed uh, is kind of an obscure one that gets these wonderful uh, iridescent purple seed pods. And I can't even think of the name right now, um, but it's, it's a really cool lantana. Used to be in the trade, but I don't think it is anymore. Um, and that you could grow from seed. One thing about annuals, and that brings up a good, uh, that question is a good question. One thing about annuals like lantana and fuchsia would fall into that category. Um, sometimes when you grow those plants from seed, they're very, very slow. And it would take you at least the whole first year of growing them to get a decent plant size. That's often why they're not offered from seed by the big growers. You know, big growers will uh, do annuals from seed that, of course, grow quickly, can produce mature plants in a few months. Um, and if you grow a fuchsia from seed, you're waiting at least a year, maybe two seasons for a good plant. Once you get that good plant, you grow it from cuttings. And I think lantana probably falls into that same category. So one more we're going to look at here um, from seed collecting is a lily. Now, lilies are interesting plants. You can grow lilies from seed. You can grow them from uh, dividing the scales off the bulbs. Uh, we'll, and we'll do that one day. But some lilies also grow bulbs down the stem. So this is one, and I have no idea what it is. It's a very old sort of heirloom one. I don't know if it's a true species or not. It was given to us by a gardener. Uh, we've had it in the garden for 30 years, uh, right from the time we started gardening here. Um, this one grows in extreme shade and still manages to bloom fairly well. I've got to get it into the sun but I don't want to lose the plant, so I don't want to go digging and fighting for bulb pieces. So how do I do that? Well, I could grow it from seed. Lily seed it can be a very slow process. Depending on the species, it'll, it'll work in two different ways. You can sometimes sow a lily seed and it will germinate and only send out a root until it gets a cold period and then it'll send up a leaf. Other lilies will send up a leaf and a root at the same time. Um, it's hard to say. So it can be a little tricky to grow lilies from seed if you don't know which ones you've got. But when you've got a lily that grows bulbs, it makes it really easy. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I'm just going to nip this off. I don't know that they're quite big enough yet to harvest properly. But if you look on the stems here... Put your hand behind it. There you go. Okay, see at the base of the leaf where it meets the stem, there's these little purple things. These are called bulbils, B-U-L-B-I-L-S, bulbils. And they are essentially a baby bulb growing on the stem. So you're avoiding that whole seed issue. All you have to do is go in collect the bulbs out and if you look that one's got a little might even have a little piece of root starting on there already cute as anything you can collect these little bulbs you can scatter them in the garden somewhere if you want or you can pot them up not right away because the plant's going to go into its dormant period store them in the fridge for now and then sometime in late winter you can take those little bulbs, here they are, and start new plants from them because they are not seeds. They are actually little baby bulbs. So a really easy way, if you've got a lily that you want to increase that makes those, um, be careful. Some of them might make them too prolifically and you might get too many, but I don't know that you can have too many lilies. So these ones, we're just going to do it the old-fashioned way. We're just going to shoot them right into the garden 
and see what happens. Just to give you an idea of lilies, I'm going to jump off screen here for a second. And I'm going to take that uh, uh, an immature Martagon lily uh, seed pod that I'm going to grow, that I'm not going to do anything with. And you can see that lilies, like day lilies, like other plants like that, all of their f seeds nice and stacked in the stem there. This is very immature, but they're probably almost going to start turning color to, to maturity, but I'm not going to use them. They're sort of the immature seed, but you can see they're almost ready. The embryo's in there. You can see it through the papery coating. As these pods turn black, they'll split open, and then a good wind or bumping into them will send the seeds scattering. If you're lucky, season or two, you'll have seedlings there, and you'll build up your lily collection. Um, Any questions? So Sophie has a question. Yeah. Is your mino lobata blooming? Uh, Seeds were late to germinate, and hers is not blooming yet. We had no luck with mina lobata this year. I don't know why. Uh, so we don't have anything in the garden. Um, annual vines that we did do, uh, we did the Venice Blue uh, Morning Glory, and they are blooming like gangbusters. Absolutely spectacular with the uh, striped blue and white flowers. They're doing fantastically well. I think Sophie gave me the seed for those ones, but they're doing great. Um, the other one that we have blooming is our moon vine. And I don't know if Laura can turn the camera a little bit. I'll show you. You have to stand behind it. I'm going to cut it off and bring it over. This is Ipomia alba. It is a morning glory, but it blooms at night. It's called the moon vine. And it is just a morning glory, a spectacular one for sure, blooming at night. Flowers open in the evening, stay open till the morning. This one's just getting the morning sun hitting it, so the flower hasn't closed yet. Um, it's really a spectacular one for, the, you know, for your patio or whatever, where you see it at night because it's quite striking. This one has been blooming for a little while. And it's one of those ones that, boy, you need to start your moon vines early. You know, morning glories, you can often scatter the seed where you want them, let them do their thing. Moon vines, we start in February and grow them indoors and put out sizable plants. Because if we didn't, we would start getting flowers right about the time we're going to get our first frost. So keep that in mind. Um, but it is a gorgeous plant. I mean, who can resist that? Imagine coming out in your patio at night and having a whole vine with a bunch of those flowers open. Pretty spectacular. Um, some of our, well, Yeah, that's about all the uh, annual vines we did this year. We didn't do a lot. Um, we didn't have great success with a lot of them. So, um, you know, there's always next year. Just to reiterate, Trudy wanted to know if that lily that had the bulbs was a day lily. No, these are true lilies. How do you tell the difference? Day lilies have strap-like foliage that comes up from a clump. Lilies have a stem with leaves that come off the stem and then are topped by flowers. Okay, they are related. The flower shape is similar, but hemerocallis or daylilies always have that long strappy foliage in a clump coming right out of the ground. All your lilies will have a stem with leaves on it. Okay, so if you say, uh, a, a lot of people call are orange ditch lilies, tiger lilies. And that's not correct, really, because they are hemerocallis. So they're hemerocallis fulva. They are a day lily. In some people's areas, if you've got an old farmstead or something that had tiger lilies, you may have them naturalized in, in ditches and, and in an old garden area, but they would have stems like this. And I'm pretty sure the tiger lilies get the bulbs on them as well. 
and you can multiply them from that. Any other questions? All right, it's a beautiful day. It's not too hot. We've had some rain. Get out in your garden. We'll have information on our trips for 2024 coming out in the next week or two. Pay attention for that. Uh, May, Chelsea Flower Show on a lot of people's bucket lists. And the Highlands of Scotland in August when the hills are covered in heather. So stay tuned for that. Tune in. we got a few more weeks left of Let's Get Growing on the radio. Saturday mornings, 9 a.m. CKDO.ca is your best place to find that. And we will see you next week on Let's Get Growing Facebook Live.